Welcome to another video. A very kind professor from New York shared with me a bunch of beautiful questions, competition pro problems that he had gathered over the years from different sources. And while going through them, I found this very interesting one because we can all relate to it. We're supposed to show that whenever you write something like this, n cubed plus 11n, it will always be divisible by 6 as long as n is an integer. It could be positive or negative. It could even be 0. See, problems like this are very interesting. And I also found it interesting. Let's get into the video. So whenever we get a challenge like this, prove that something is divisible by a number. You just have to say, if I can show that this is a multiple of 6, I have to be able to write this as this is equal to 6 times something, where that something is an integer, then you're done. The problem is nothing in this expression contains 6 that is obvious. We don't know. I'm trying to find 6 because, yeah, you can't generate 6, okay, by just working with these two. So what I can do is go and look at the properties of 6. Remember, any number is divisible by 6 if it is divisible by the prime factors of 6, which are 2 and 3. So if we can show that this number is divisible by, I mean this expression, whatever n is, whatever integer n is, that this expression is always even and that means it's divisible by 2. If we can also show that whenever you write an expression like this, it is always divisible by 3, then it is divisible by 6. So all we have to show is use the prime factors of 6 as the divisors. If we can show that they divide this, then we have answered the question. Now how we do that is where your algebra and your number theory skills will come in. I just wrote all the explanation that I made in clear words to show that 6 divides n cubed plus 11n, we need to show that n cubed plus 11n is even and it is a multiple of 3. Then we know that 6 divides it. So let's begin. So to show that this is always even, all we have to do is make two assumptions, okay, or do two cases. Well, we can assume that the integer we're dealing with is an even integer or it's an odd integer. Those are the two cases, right? So, let's look. In fact, I don't want to oversimplify it. Let's just do it. Case one, n is even. If n is even, I can factor this and say that n cubed plus 11n will be equal to n times n squared plus 11, right? If n is even, then it is an even number multiplying another number. Whatever this number is, it doesn't matter. Because n is even, this number is even, that means this is even, okay? You're done with that case. So the second case is when n is odd and just go back to this expression. Wait, if n is odd, this is odd. The cube, if you keep multiplying an odd number by itself, it will always be odd. And 11, which is an odd number, times an odd number is odd. The sum of two odd numbers is always even. So this is even. And you can use this also. It's an odd number times, this is odd plus odd, which makes this even. So this is even times odd, which is even. So what, however you do it, this number will always be divisible by 2. 
is even. You can give the reason odd plus odd equals even. That's it. So now we have shown the first part, which is that this expression is even. Now the second part is we have to show that this expression is always a multiple of three. That's a bit hard. The task now is to show that n cubed plus 11n is a multiple of three. Because as soon as we do that, we're done with this proof. Okay. Now, there are two ways you can do this, actually. I, I, I might divide the board into two. Let me call this method one. And this would be by mathematical induction. For mathematical induction, we just need to test the beginning because since we're dealing with integers, let's just say um, we test, it doesn't matter what integer you test, okay? But typically we always start from one, okay? So we'll say that our proposition is that p of one, so let's try proposition p of one, let's do it this way, is such that if you plug this in, we have, um, 1 cubed plus 11 times 1 equals 12, which is equal to 3 times 4. This is a correct proposition, okay? It is true for 1 when n equals 1. So we're going to assume that this is true for n equals k, which means that we're going to say that k cubed plus 11k will be equal to a multiple of 3. Well, we can write it as 3, let's just call it 3m. Okay, let's just call it 3m, where m is an integer So, remember, we tested the first one. We saw that it was true. If you test two, it will be true. Test three, keep testing it to be true. We just want to be sure that it does not matter what the integer is. Whenever the integer is k, we're assuming it is true. We just need to show that it is true for the next integer after k. Remember, k is just arbitrarily chosen. So, here, we're going to say um, for p, the proposition when n is equal to k plus 1. What's going to be happening? Well, let's see what's going to happen. Okay, um, we have um, a such that we're going to have k plus 1 cubed plus 11k. k plus 1 cubed plus 11k. We need to show that it is a multiple of 3, just as this one is. Well, how do we show that? Well, we got to expand this. I'll quickly use Pascal's triangle in this case. And what do we have? If you cube this, you're going to be having k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. That's the expansion of this. Plus, oh, this is not 11k. Remember, our k is k plus 1. So k plus 1 is what you have here. So here, if you distribute this, you're going to have plus 11k plus 11 times 1 is 11. Okay, what do you think we get here? This is going to be k cubed. Now, be careful, because when you do this kind of mathematical induction, you're going to end up using this claim that you made here. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is go find this expression, because I will need it. So k cubed plus 11k, this is k cubed, and this is 11k. I'm going to pull it out immediately. k cubed plus 11k. Because sometimes, once you mess with that, you will not get your answer. So let you go to the next one. So we have plus 3k cubed. No, this is 3k squared. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> it's 3k squared. So this is 3k squared plus 3k. Then you have 1 plus 11 gives you 12. Nice. But remember we said that this is a multiple of 3. We already said it is equal to 3m. We assumed it was true for the k. 
NEK. And that's the assumption we're going to take here. And we say that this has to be our 3M. Then we have everything else. Well, you can see that 3 is common. Well, let's just write everything out. This is 3K squared plus 3K plus 12. Can you see that? This is the same thing. If you factor out 3, you're going to end up with some expression M plus um, K squared plus K plus 4. This is an integer because this is an integer plus the square of an integer plus an integer plus 4. Everything is an integer. 3 times an integer shows that you are still in the realm of integers being multiplied by 3. So this expression will always be a multiple of 3. So let's finish this. Therefore, 3 divides n cubed plus 11n by mathematical induction. I'm just going to leave it that way by mi. And with that, we're done with our proof. I'm done. Okay, oh, that was the first method. I said I was going to do two methods. Now, the second method requires that you know some, num some number theory, okay? And I'm going to show you what it means, and I'm going to use it. You, you're going to see that it's beautiful. And that was the solution that the professor actually used, which I found very appropriate if you know what you're doing, and then you don't have to write as much. Okay, so this method just rests on this claim. Let me show you an example. If you want to know that 3 divides 12, now you know 3 divides 12, right? But assuming you did not know. But you know that 3 divides 15, okay? You don't know 3 divides 12, but you know that 3 divides 15. So, this is the theorem. If, I'm going to use 3, it's not a theorem because I'm using 3. Okay, look at this. If A divides B, and A divides B plus C, then A divides C. That's it. So this theorem requires that you understand that if 3 divides an expression or a number, okay, and when you add that expression to what we have here, which in this case would be our C, and we can show that 3 also divides that sum, then we know that 3 divides C, which in this case, will be our n cubed plus 11n, okay? So it takes a lot of skills. I think it's, it, it requires a lot more knowledge and whatever than mathematical induction, okay? But it's gonna work out. So the choice that we're gonna make here is we're gonna pick negative 12n. So what I'm gonna do is choose an expression that's divisible by three. I'm gonna choose, consider, negative 12 n. Negative 12 n is equal to 3 times negative 4 n. So clearly this number, this expression is divisible by 3, right? No matter what n is as an integer, we're going to have this. So what we're going to do is, because 3 divides negative 12 n, we're going to add it to this thing here and see if 3 divides it. Because if we can show that 3 divides the sum of this and this, then we know that 3 divides this. So we have n cubed plus 11n minus 12n will be equal to n cubed minus n. So the question is, for all values of n, is n cubed minus n divisible by 3? Let's check it out. But 
n cubed minus n is the same thing as n into n squared minus 1, which is equal to n times n minus 1, n plus 1, which is equal to n minus 1, n, n plus 1. I don't need to put parentheses here. Let's leave it this way. What do you see? This is the product of three consecutive integers. It doesn't matter how you write it. When you line up three consecutive integers, the product is always divisible by three. Three divides n cubed minus n. Then three divides n cubed plus 11n. And that's it. Therefore, for all n, for all integers, 6 divides n cubed plus 11n. And that's it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.